I did look in the gas tank. There is a little bit of liquid in there. It doesn't smell very good. So we're gonna have to clean that out. All right, good morning everybody. It's Ben, I'm in the shop today. The day has finally come that I'm gonna tackle this thing. This is our 50 gallon spray rig that we bought from a storage unit that they told us was locked up. But that's what I'm gonna tackle today. So first thing, I'm gonna start by cleaning it up. I hate working on dirty stuff, so I'm gonna drag it outside, spray it down. That's what we're gonna do first. Okay, here's what I've got. We have a 50 gallon spray rig. The motor itself's a little bit dirty, a little bit older. Um, it's got one of the standard pumps, roller pumps on it. So from the tank, sucks through the filter into the pump, and then you've got your recirc valve and your line that goes up to your reel. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward setup. Very similar to a lot of the rigs. So direct shaft through a Lovejoy yoke to the pump. And the problem that we're facing, the problem that we're facing is we don't know what condition the motor's in. They told us it was locked up, but when you pull on the string, I wanna show you something. I'm gonna pull on the string and look at that, look at the yoke. The motor side actually tries to move and it's just hitting the rudder, rubber bumper and this one is not. So that tells me the motor is probably good. The pump is probably bad. So I've got a new pump ordered. Here's what my plan is today. Um, I'm going to take the pump off, see if the motor will spin freely. If it does, before I start it, I'm gonna drain the oil and make sure there's no gas going bad in the tank. I'll do a full service. So oil, um, gear oil, spark plug, clean the carb, air filter, all that kind of stuff. Get it 100% ready to go before I start it. And then we'll try to run it because it should run. If it's not connected, there should be nothing holding it back. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, all I've done so far is spray it off and get it up on jack stands. And the reason I've got it on jack stands is so that I can get underneath this pump motor easier and get it closer to where I'm sitting. So I think what we're gonna do is unbolt this, check and see if it spins freely, and then start working on the motor itself. I guess get rid of this lock, because I don't have the combo. Okay, so all I've done is unbolted the pump and just slid it back away from the yoke. So the moment of truth, oh, look at that. Just like I thought, the motor's not locked up. If you're dealing with any kind of engine, you don't know what kind of shape it's in, you wanna do a full check on it first. We don't know how long this thing's been sitting. I don't have any clue. It's been a while. So condensation on metal parts causes moisture problems. You don't want to try to run this motor even if it will start without, first of all, you know, draining the fluids, making sure there's no water in there, and then changing them, doing a tune-up. I mean, I don't, I could try to start it without 
doing anything to the carburetor but I want to make sure that the oil's not got water in it so I'm going to drain those first take care of that and uh, go from there now that it's free we know it's not locked up you can fix all the other stuff so Okay, that's out of the way. Let's get uh, oil drain underneath it. Get this going. Okay, on these motors, there's an oil fill here. There's actually another one on the back side. I don't know why one's gray and one's black, but they go to the same place. And then there's also drain plugs on each side. Some of these motors come with this extension, which is really cool because then it lets you drain the oil out further away from the motor. This one is not a problem because luckily this has got a gap so I can put my oil pan underneath and just let it drain. So here we go, let's see how bad it looks. Man, that's... It was in there pretty tight. There it is. Okay, well the good news is it's very black. It's not looking milky, which if it had water in it, it would look kind of milky. So that's good news. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil out of this. It'll hit the same pan. That drain plug is on the other side right here so this is a gear reducer and it's got oil in it so here's your fill here's your drain so we're gonna get that out okay so I've got the drain plug off the back of this gear reducer. The uh, bad news is there's nothing coming out. So we're gonna pop the top. Just see if, see what's going on. Still nothing. I wonder if I'm gonna have to tip it a little bit more to get that oil out. We'll check that. All right, well, the good news is I've got some decent color, kind of a golden amber color coming out of the oil, so it was not bad. The bad news is there's no oil coming out of the gear reducer, so it's a good thing we didn't run it. Hopefully it's not damaged, because that's actually the most important part of this motor. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, get that rusty spark plug out of there. I did look in the gas tank. There is a little bit of liquid in there. It doesn't smell very good. So we're gonna have to clean that out. And then I'm assuming that this is not gonna be in the best shape. So we're gonna pop this off and probably clean that carburetor. But this is what I was talking about. There's two oil fill covers. One's got a dipstick and one doesn't. So actually they have the one on the inside with the dipstick. I may switch them. I think you can just switch them. Ooh, that's old school there. There's supposed to be foam around that. <laughs> so I got to get a new air filter because that one is not going to cut it. But that's okay. Okay. I think what I need to do is take off the fuel tank, clean it. I took off the air filter. So in order to get the carburetor off, there's one 10 millimeter nut right here, or bolt right here. Uh, that's not right. That's supposed to be connected onto that, that little breather hose. That's fine. And then these two 10s come off. This cover will come off and then the carburetor is behind it. And that's what actually holds it on. So once you slide this off, carburetor will slide off too.
Okay, so I got the carburetor off. Basically, there's a uh, this little throttle adjuster that you need to pop out of the top, and it has a little spring-loaded clip on it too. And then it just slides off. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's a little bit gelled up inside, so I'm not sure if it's going to work very well. And it's got some rust deposits and stuff on it. So I'm going to get some cleaner and see what we can do about getting it running. If not, I've got a backup one. My concern was this butterfly valve was not even turning at all. So gasoline, when it gets old, it kind of turns to like varnish. And it's really sticky and it plugs all the little jet holes that you need to have. So that's the problem. Um, we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, so I got the fuel tank. It's empty. What I'm gonna do is basically just get some carb cleaner in there and get the rest of that cleaned out so that we don't have any bad stuff trying to go through the motor. Next step we're gonna do is, this comes right off the top. We're gonna take the float bulb off the bottom. There's two 10 millimeters here. There's a drain and then this takes it off. We're gonna clean underneath there. See if we can't get this thing to loosen up. Okay, this is where we're at. I have a brand new kind of cheap knockoff, I'm sure Chinese carburetor that I bought off online. I know you're not supposed to buy online, but they don't sell these kits anywhere but online. So I've got this carburetor ready to go. I tried to get the other one clean, but what wasn't happening was this that moves very freely right here was not moving at all. Even if I got on it with pliers, that's, uh, I believe that's the throttle. And then this is the choke. So yeah, that's the throttle. And if that doesn't move, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna put this one on it for now. And so basically what we need to do is we need to get our fuel line run back through, get it connected up. I've cleaned this housing i know it doesn't look too clean but it's it's cleaned out on the inside which is going to go there we've got the gas tank cleaned i've got to let it dry out and then i can put that on run a line through get this stuff put back together and give it a shot meanwhile down here i'm ready to plug up because there's no oil coming out i've got to figure out what's going on with this i might put a little bit of oil in it and just to see if it comes out and uh, go from there but first we're going to cap this off and get regular engine oil back into this looks really funky without the gas tank on top there's not much to these so we're going to do that first and uh, we'll go
had a lot of neat little things like a new fuel line with those little clips that connect the fuel liner and hold it in place. And it came with a new switch, new on off switch, just in case this one doesn't work. So apparently that may be a common issue. And if it is, we'll switch it. This little box came with more gaskets for the carburetor and then <laughs> a new spark plug. That's cool. It also came with a, uh, I think they call it, it's not a Pepcock because it doesn't turn on and off, but this is the uh, fuel strainer. It's got a little strainer on it. It goes into the fuel tank. I didn't change that, but I may have to, so we'll keep that handy. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just pull the spark plug out and rest it on the block, turn on the power and just slowly move it and see if there's any spark. If we have spark, then we should run. Um, but I'm a little worried about the electrical components because I don't know they've got weird stuff on them So if that's the case, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna check it before we start it Okay, there are a couple of ways to test your electrical or your spark What you do is you pull your spark plug Put it back into your spark plug line your wire put it on something that's connected to the block that's metal this this muffler should work and you look right here when the power switch is on and you slowly pull this and i see a little bit of spark right there i don't know if you guys can see it but we're going to look hopefully you saw that so there is spark good news is there's spark so now i'm going to put fuel in it put the plug back in and see if it'll